Now let's review some of the mechanical aspects of the print arm itself. Number one is we have our locking lever. The nice thing about SROX is that we can unlock the lever, lift up the arm, they're spring assisted so it's very easy and lock it in the up position. Why is this so nice? This is nice so that if I need to clean my screen, I can get under it without having to go all the way down to the floor. Um, I can also tape off my registration marks after setup. Um, it's very ergonomic, very helpful. Again, to lower the arms, you simply release the bracket, lower the arm, and lock it back into position. Now this is ready in the print position. The next thing is our air pressure. This controls the actual pressure in which we hold squeegees and flood bars down into their set position. To change your air pressure, you lift up on the knob. You'll see a, ring, a red ring down here. That means it's in a, you can adjust it. Counterclockwise decreases the air pressure. Clockwise increases the air pressure. Once you have your air pressure set to your desired setting, push the cap down. That way, if somebody walks by, they can't turn it and change the pressure of your squeegees. The next item we're going to talk about is our squeegee and flood bar. We're going to talk about putting them in and also our angle adjustments. The S-Rock is very nice. We have a single point mounting mechanism. So to put flood bars and squeegees in, you simply slide them into the gap that's provided. You pull, pull on the uh, alignment pin and then you just slide it back and forth and it automatically centers and locks in. The same thing is done on both sides for both squeegee and flood bar. They insert the exact same way as far as how you put them in. The next thing is our squeegee angles and flood bar angles. We can adjust these with the levers on the side. We have anywhere from five degrees to 25 degrees. With the winged flood bars from Rock, 25 degrees is going to make sure that the wings are all the way down on the screen, pushing the ink towards the middle of the screen. A lot of times when we're training people, we train them at 15 degrees so that the wings are actually off the screen. Yeah, it doesn't push the ink in as much, but we call it screen safe. It's not going to accidentally pop the screen if during training we're uh, uh, setting some distances in, uh, too far down. However, once you're used to your machine and you know how to use your settings appropriately, 25 with the winged flood bars will keep as much ink in the screen as possible. And it's the same with your squeegee angle. You just simply loosen and you can change your squeegee angle to whatever you desire. The next item is our screen clamps. The screen clamps are operated with these two switches on the side. These are the clamps in which we lock a screen into the press. So if I load a screen, I lock it in, the bar comes down on the screen. If I release it, it releases the screen. Another feature related to this are our adjustment knobs. These lockdown knobs screw down so that you can lock your screen in position. You'd want to do that if you're leaving a good job set up overnight or over the weekend. As your compressor loses air, as the machine loses air, then these will make sure that your screen is locked in and you don't lose registration. Of course, to unload it, you would need to unscrew those. The last item on this side of the arm is your uh, machine side screen clamp. So basically what I would do is bring my screen in, into position, lock it in the operator side, unlock the rear screen clamp, bring it up. The disc that you see on the clamp, you want to ensure that half of that disc is on the screen. You don't want to press it all the way up to your frame. So make sure about half of it's on your screen frame, lock it in, then you can lock in your rear screen, your rear screen clamp. You have three dials for micro-registration, your left, your right, and your uh, uh, x-axis. So basically, your uh, two dials on the left and the right, they're going to control multiple things. They're going to control front and back, or they're going to control just one side moving in and out, the left side moving in and out, or what we call theta axis. So by turning the dials to the left, you're pushing the screen towards the machine. By turning them to the right, 
you're pulling the screen towards the operator. If you're doing your left and right, and this only controls left or right, if you go counterclockwise, you're moving the screen to the left. If you go clockwise, you're moving the screen to the right. With your two, with your two knobs, if you turn them in opposing directions, you're going to get theta rotation of the screen. If you turn them both in the same in the inward direction together, you're going to get theta direction in the opposite. If you want to just move the screen straight towards the machine or towards the operator, you move them in the same direction. So again, if I move them counter or excuse me, clockwise, I'm bringing the screen towards the operator. If I move them counterclockwise together at the same rate, I'm moving the screen towards the machine. We also have our off contact adjustments on each print arm. The SROC has independent off contact for every single print arm. This is very important if you're using, uh, uh, say for example, hoodies or fleece, where if you're putting down a base layer of white, you might want more off contact than the rest of your colors. So the operator side is simply on these knobs on the left and right of the screen clamp where zero is zero off contact. In other words, your screen is flat to the palette. And the higher the number, two would be a higher off contact. Um, also, both sides are independent from one another. So it's important that you use them uh, equally because if you have more off contact on one side than the other, you might end up with inconsistent prints. On your rear clamp, there's also a dial in the back. You can see it here in the front. As this turns, this changes your off contact for the machine side of the screen. You just adjust it left and right. Note that your screen clamp has to be unlatched to be able to, to change your off contact on the machine side. If your clamp is engaged, you can't even turn the, turn the knob. So that'll be fairly self-evident. The second thing on this is our distance settings. There's a gauge on both of these dials, zero to two. Zero meaning closer to the pallet, two meaning higher than the pallet. What these adjustments are is your distance settings for your flood bars and squeegees. So if my squeegee was down, right now I'm on the pallet. If I was adjust to adjust towards two, as you can see, the flood bar is raising. So by using your distance settings, in conjunction with your pressure settings, you can achieve the best print possible. Probably our number one tech support call at Ryanet is I'm trying to print my pallet cycle and my print, harm, print head just goes up and down and I hear clicking noises. You can possibly hear it in the video, but you can also see that the print carriage is not going to move. I'm trying to print. It's not printing and it's not flooding. Why is that? Every print carriage has two sensors in it. We have a machine side and an operator side. If your limit bars are too close, both sensors are active simultaneously. So the machine doesn't know the print carriage is on the operator side or if it's on the machine side. It can only be in one position at a time. So if I, and if I lengthen my limit bar out, and now if I cycle the machine, now you'll see that the print carriage works and only the sensor on is the position it's in. How, do, how, do, how does this problem arise? A lot of time people are trying to just do a left print, a left chest print, and they want a very small print stroke. So, you know, hey, I'll make my machine run faster, I'll get these things close. That's great, we do want them close and we do want to run fast, but you want at least enough separation that, uh, that you're not blocking both sensors. Additionally, to have that appropriate gap, you now have an appropriate stroke that your flood is going to cover the image as well as the squeegee covering the image. If these are too close together, creating the problem, you wouldn't be able to uh, print that short of a distance anyway because you wouldn't get full flood bar and squeegee coverage over the image. 